Okay, so today we'll start with the start and finish off with the last topic of this uh, unit, uh, which is AC network analysis. So AC analysis uh, of uh, or AC network analysis using mesh is uh, included in your syllabus. So we'll uh, start and finish off with this. So in the uh, um, mesh analysis of DC networks. Whatever we have seen, the same thing you have to repeat in this uh, AC analysis of mesh, mesh analysis of AC network. So entire things are same. That is four types of problems. Same here also. One is either voltage source and uh, in DC analysis there was only the resistances were there. So instead of resistances. Along with resistances, there may be inductance or capacitance may be there, but their resistance component is given to you. So no problem. Only a complex part will be included in that. Either it will be uh, J or minus J included with that particular Ohm term. So that's all. Then uh, first type of problem only voltage source. And along with these impedances will be there. Second type of problem: current source may be added in that, and current source will be at the outer part of the circuit. So it is not common between any two mesh. Then third part, uh, third type of problems are the super mesh. That is, the current source is common between two meshes. So that is the super mesh. And fourth type is the dependent sources. So all four types of problems will start and finish off today itself. Okay. So first I'll stop my video and then start. Okay. So using mesh analysis, you have to calculate the current uh, I1 and I2 in the network of this figure. So if this is the AC voltage source, which is 100 angle 45 degree. And the polarity is given here plus minus just to say this is the positive or phase terminal and this is the neutral terminal so that whenever we'll uh, apply KVL for this, if this will be the positive terminal and this will be negative terminal as usual. Okay, so this is voltage source given to you. This is resistance and inductor. Inductor of the resistance of inductor is given to you as. J4 ohm. Then the resistance of this inductance is given as J10 ohm, and the uh, resistance of this capacitance it is given as minus J10 ohm. So for inductance it is always plus J, and for capacitance it is always minus J, along with the constant, and that will be the resistance of that. Okay, so. Simply in the same manner, we'll take two meshes and take um, clockwise current as positive. Let us say I1 and I2 currents are flowing in the two meshes. So apply KVL for mesh one. So if you will apply KVL to mesh one, you are moving in this uh, source from minus to positive, negative to positive terminal. So means it is plus. So plus 100 angle 45 minus for this. You can club them. So minus of three plus J four. So minus of in bracket three plus J four into I one minus J ten into I one minus I two equal to zero. So after applying KVL to this first mesh, you will get this equation. Now club all the terms of I one together, I two together, and constants on another side. But while clubbing all the terms. You have to take care that in a complex numbers, if they are of this a plus j b form, then only you can add or subtract. If it is of this rectangular to um, rectangular uh, sorry polar fashion means r angle theta, then you cannot add them. You can divide or multiply in this polar form, and in this rectangular form, you can only add or subtract. 
so while adding or subtracting you take care that they are in a plus jb form and while dividing no need to um, then rearrange because of the calculator on calculator will see how you can directly divide or multiply or uh, add or subtract all these terms only while clubbing the terms together you take care that you are adding or subtracting only the rectangular um, part or cartesian uh, part that is uh, a plus jb format not r plus theta format okay so uh, after this you will get this equation and let us say it is equation number 1 now apply kvl to mesh 2 if you will apply kvl to mesh 2 then you will find that it is minus j10 into i2 minus of in bracket you write minus j10 into i2 and for this j10 it will be i2 minus i1 so minus j10 i2 minus i1 plus j10 i2 equal to 0 this is let us say after clubbing the terms j10 i1 equal to 0 that means i1 equal to 0 this is second equation now you have got directly value of i1 from this equation to you substitute this value of i1 here and you can calculate value of i2 so i2 will be equal to directly this 100 angle 45 this term you take it on that side so it will be uh, directly you can say uh, this i1 multiplied by uh, means i1 is zero so this term will vanish and only this minus j10 will be at the denominator so i2 will be 100 angle 45 divided by minus j10 and uh, how you can solve this in uh, your calculator i hope you know that if not i'll show you how to enter that so in your calculator first turn on your calculator after turning it on i hope it is visible to you now after turning on you press this more switch once if you will press it once you will find that one is com and another is complex so you have to press two because we want to do complex addition multiplication division and all so i'll press here two so now my calculator is in complex mode once it is in complex mode you can do anything complex calculations so first you 100 angle 45 so i'll press 100 on this so on screen 100 will appear now for angle you will find that there is one key uh, having this angle this into bracket minus it is shown and above that angle is shown angle theta so you uh, press once shift and this minus sign bracket into bracket minus sign because it will give me angle so you will find that angle sign will be there then i'll write simply 45 so this is 100 angle 45 i have entered now whatever you want i want to divide it by uh, say minus j10 so what i will do i'll uh, simply take divide by sign and then in bracket i'll write because if uh, a plus jb or whatever it may be i'll write in bracket so into bracket minus j10 so minus 10 and for j one eng is there on eng you will find that i is there so that is the for complex so i'll press that so it will appear on the screen as minus 10 i i close the bracket and this division i'll get directly if you will press this equal then you will get the real part of that so it is minus 7.07 is the real part that is a and if you want to find its b jb so you have to press shift and equal so after pressing shift and equal you will find the another b coefficient that is a plus jb so b coefficient is 7.07 and if you want this answer in um, not in rectangular form if you want in polar form this answer is in rectangular form it is giving me minus 7.07 and plus 7.07 i or j and i want to convert it into polar form so 
again you press shift and this positive sign plus sign if you will press this plus sign he will ask you whether that answer you want to convert in r angle theta so yes i want to convert it in r angle theta so i'll press equal so if i'll press equal you will get r value of r and it is coming as m and if you want its theta you have to press again shift and then equal so if you will press shift and equal i have got it as 135 degree so what our answer i was interested to find i2 equal to 10 angle 135 degree i have got it on the calculator so i hope you have understood this i'll close now video and then proceed further so this was the problem in which i1 and i2 we were interested to find now second problem is similar type 1 problem but only thing here you can observe three meshes are there instead of two meshes now three meshes are there find out mesh currents i1 i2 and i3 in the network of this figure so this is first mesh second mesh and third mesh now i'll assume clockwise currents i1 i2 and i3 in all three meshes and then apply kvl for mesh 1 if i'll apply kvl for mesh 1 i'll start from this through this source current is flowing from negative terminal to positive terminal so same terminology it will be positive so plus 10 angle 30 then minus phi minus j2 minus of i'll club these two terms phi minus j2 into i1 minus 3 into i1 minus i2 equal to 0 so this is the kvl equation of first loop now again rearrange the terms club all the terms of i1 together club all the terms of i2 together and constants on another side so you will get this equation 8 minus j2 i1 minus 3 i2 equal to 10 angle 30 let us say this is equation number 1 apply kvl to mesh 2 so you will get this minus 3 i2 minus i1 minus j5 i2 minus 5 i2 minus i3 so it is same as that of we have done in the dc analysis okay then club all the terms of i1 together i2 together and i3 together and constants on all other side say this is equation number 2 then apply kvl for mesh 3 it is minus 5 into i3 minus i2 then minus 2 into bracket Minus J two, so minus of two minus J two. This is in bracket and into I three will be equal to zero. Again, rearrange the terms. Club all the terms of I two together, I three together. Constants on another side. Say this is equation number three. Now I have got three equations and three unknowns. So I have to solve this by a Cramer's rule because for solving these complex uh, directly, you cannot solve it on the calculator so you have to use cramer's rule only so for using cramer's rule first i'll write all these equations 1 to 3 in matrix form so in matrix form i'll write a coefficient of a coefficient matrix of a b and c coefficients of i1 i2 and i3 in equation number 1 coefficients of i1 i'll place it here i2 and i3 second equation coefficient of i1 i2 i3 third equation coefficient of i1 i2 and i3 then here i1 i2 i3 and then this these are the constant terms which are on the other side for equation 1 for equation 2 and for equation 3 means if your equation you are saying that it is ax plus by plus cz equal to b if it is of this form then you can write here a here b here c and d will be here and x is your variable you will write it here okay so these are the variables of which you want to find the value i1 i2 and i3 it is a column matrix and your constant term it is also a column matrix and this matrix 
is a coefficient matrix of these variables coefficient of these variables of all three equations so this is a 3 by 3 matrix now if you want to find value of i1 then by cramer's rule you can find value of i1 as i1 is equal to determinant of this total determinant will be at the denominator and for numerator first column will be replaced by this column of constants right so i'll replace 8 minus j2 minus 3 and 0 by 10 angle 30 0 and 0 so this will be my first column second and third column will be as it is and denominator will be the same coefficient of all these matrix written in the determinant okay so i1 is equal to this 10 angle 30 0 0 i have replaced first column and the rest two columns are as it is and the denominator term it is the same this matrix but in determinant form so you have to solve this determinant and how to solve this determinant any determinant you can solve it this is 3 by 3 determinant so you can solve it by this a into bracket this into this minus this into this okay then minus of this term into bracket this into this minus this into this so that particular column you have to uh, leave and that particular row you have to leave and the remaining you have to take product of this minus product of this okay right hand diagonal minus this left hand diagonal so this you have to do so after solving this you will find the value of i1 as 1.43 angle 38.7 in similar manner you can find i2 denominator will be same same only in numerator now you want to find value of i2 so you will replace the middle row that is second row uh, sorry second column by this constants so first column you will keep as it is so same as denominator third column is same as that of denominator only the middle column you have replaced it by this constant terms and denominator will be same as it is so after solving this you will get the value of i2 as this then for i3 you have to replace third column by the constants and remaining two columns are as it is and then after solving this you will get this answer okay so it is a cramer's rule which you have already learned but i have just refreshed or revised uh, this cramer's rule okay so this is type 1 problem now in type 2 problem there is a current source so here a current source is added in the mesh but it is not in the common to these meshes means it is outside the loop that's why it is a second type of problem so how to tackle with second type of problem you need not have to apply kvl to this particular loop because directly a current source is given to you so i1 is equal to 2 angle 30 will be first equation and you have to apply kvl for this second loop if you will apply kvl to second loop then you can begin it with this 2 minus j2 with minus sign so minus of 2 minus j2 into bracket i2 minus i1 minus j1 into i2 and minus this 8 angle 45 equal to 0 right so after simplifying this you will get this equation in terms of i1 i2 and a constant now from first equation you have got directly value of i1 you can substitute it here and find out value of i2 directly so i2 will be 8 angle 45 minus this whole term you can take it on this side and divide by this minus 2 minus j1 at denominator so after solving this you can directly get the answer so i2 you have got now what is asked it is asked that find the voltage across two ohm resistor so you need to find 
voltage drop across this two ohm resistor so how to find that it is simply i1 minus i2 that is the current flowing net current flowing through this two ohm resistor into this two ohm so i1 and i2 you have found out so twice of i1 minus i2 will be the value of this voltage drop across two ohm resistor so this is type 2 problem now type 3 problem is the super mesh so super mesh you can see in this problem in mesh 1 no problem mesh 2 and 3 in mesh 2 and 3 there is one current current source which is common between these two mesh 2 and 3 so as current source is common between these two meshes it is a it uh, this two mesh 2 and 3 are forming a super mesh so you have to apply all the rules of super mesh analysis okay so for first uh, mesh you apply directly kvl for mesh 1 so you will get 10 angle 0 minus j2 i1 minus 3 i1 minus 1 into i1 minus i2 equal to 0 rearrange the terms you will get equation of i1 i2 and the constant Name this as equation number one. Now for mesh two and three, they are forming super mesh. So you have to write first a current equation. So uh, writing current equation for this super mesh, it is equal to this I three minus I two will be equal to one angle zero. That is the current source. So this is let us say second equation. One equation you got it from current equation of super mesh, and now. apply kvl for this super mesh so after applying kvl to super mesh you will find that it is minus 1 into i2 minus i1 minus 5 into i3 minus j1 into i3 equal to 0 so again rearrange the terms club all the terms of i1 together i2 together i3 together and constants on another side mark this as equation number 3 So you have got three equations and three unknowns. You can solve it by Cramer's rule. So write all these equations in matrix form. So for while writing all these equations in matrix form, you take care that all the terms of I one, I two, and I three you will write and a constant. Even if I three term is not here in equation one, you write zero I three. I one term is not there in equation two, you write zero I one. and uh, in third equation all three terms are there so you take care that if the coefficient is not present for that particular variable you have to write it as zero so uh, write this matrix carefully and then solve so we are interested to find current through 3 ohm resistor and current through 3 ohm resistor is nothing but your i1 so we are interested to find only i1 so no need to find i2 and i3 so we'll find only i1 i1 is equal to by this matrix you write in determinant form at the denominator so this entire matrix uh, which are the coefficients of i1 i2 i3 uh, at denominator you will write it as determinant and at numerator you will replace the first column since you are finding first variable replace first column by the constants if you want to find second uh, variable you replace second column by this constant if you want to find third variable value then replace third column by constant so since we are interested to find i1 that is first variable will replace this first column by this constant term and then second and third column will keep as it is after solving these two determinants and its ratio you will find the value of i1 as this once you have got the value of i1 same current is flowing through 3 ohm resistor so that is the value of the current flowing through 3 ohm resistor so this is type 3 problem and last type of problem it is the type 4 problem which is having a dependent current source or voltage source whatever it may be so here a dependent source is there and since in diamond block dependent source is there a polarities are given so it is a voltage source so it is a voltage source and uh, outside that block two i1 is written that means it is a current dependent voltage source so whatever it may be simply you apply uh, kvl 
you uh, take assume two currents i1 and i2 both in clockwise direction as the positive currents and then apply kvl for this both these loops if you will apply kvl for this first loop i will start it from this so it will be uh, 100 angle 0 minus 3 i1 minus j4 into i1 minus i2 equal to 0 so this is the equation i'll rearrange the terms club all the terms of i1 together i2 together and constant on other side say this is equation number 1 then apply kvl for this second loop if you will apply kvl for this loop then you will find this minus j4 into i2 minus i1 minus of minus j2 into i2 then this minus 2 i1 equal to 0 then rearrange the terms club all the terms of i1 together i2 together and constant on another side mark this as equation number 2 now solve these two equations with two variables either you can solve by cramer's rule or if only two variables are there you can see here it is very easy to see this is minus j4 term and this is carrying minus j2 term of i2 coefficient so if you will multiply this equation number 2 by 2 then you will find that this term will become minus j4 and if you will subtract this equation 2 from 1 then your this i2 term will get cancel so only i1 term will be there you can add these two terms and rearrange find the value of i1 so i1 it is coming out as 100 divided by 7 minus j4 that is equal to 12.4 angle 29.75 degree ampere so this is value of i1 you have got i1 value you substitute i1 value in any of these two equations and you will get the value of i2 so i2 value is coming as 27.7 angle 56.31 so this is the last type of problem and in this another one more we'll see that is if it is a voltage dependent voltage source is given this is the network given to you then uh, assume these currents clockwise directions of these currents they are the positive currents now apply kvl for this particular loop first loop and second loop that's all so if you will apply kvl for first loop you will find that this nine angle zero Minus six i one, and this term it is minus of minus j three into i one minus i two. Okay, and same is the v x. So you can uh, write equation for uh, uh, v x term. You can write v x is equal to again this i one minus i two into j three minus of Minus J T. Okay, that is the value of V X. Now I apply K V L for second loop. If you will apply K V L for second loop, it is this minus of minus J three into I two minus I one, then plus two V X minus three into I two equal to zero. So this is second loop in which you have applied K V L. Now Vx value you have already found out. You substitute the value of Vx here in terms of i1 and i2, so that only two equations will be remaining, and both are in the form of uh, in terms of i1 and i2. And you can find the values of i1 and i2 either using this matrix form and Cramer's rule, or you can solve them simultaneously by multiplying. one equation by something and then adding or subtracting but it is uh, in this example you cannot see that so it will be better if you will use cramer's rule so by using cramer's rule you can find the values of i1 and i2 right so that's all thank you friends so this completes your first unit so i hope you have understood the things I'll switch up recording first, and then uh, we'll discuss.